Okay, noob time. You ready to learn everything you need to know about mastering Nita? Uh, yes? Before anything else, the most important thing that you can possibly learn is the Nita Bear Roar. Roar? No, no. No, like this. Oh, okay. Let, let me try that then. Whoa. Yeah, that'll do. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Carlos Time, and it is time to brawl. Now today we're going to be talking about Nita, who is literally one of my favorite brawlers in the game. She is so much fun to play and I'm really excited about doing this guide. And you should be excited too. Now this Brawl Stars guide is going to include a quick rundown of her mechanics, an in-depth look at her stats, how to push her to 500 trophies easily, including which mode she's best played in, and of course, some advanced Nita tech. If there are any other brawlers out there that you would like me to do on my channel, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comment section which brawler you would like me to have next. Now for Nita's attack called Rupture, Nita sends out a shockwave that deals a low amount of damage over a medium amount of range. This attack deals damage to all targets within that area it reaches, which means that aiming it correctly, you can actually do a pretty good job at 2v1-ing other brawlers. For her super overbearing, Nita summons a slow moving with it. actually a pretty sizable amount of HP that will locate and follow the nearest enemy, whether they're in the bush or not. However, it will not locate and find an invisible Leon. This is one of the best supers in the game for helping you and your team push back the enemy team. When Nita reaches level 10, she gains her star power labeled Bear With Me. Her star power makes it so that whenever she deals damage and her bear is up, her bear heals up a small amount of HP, and whenever her, her bear deals damage, then Nita gains a small amount of HP. The healing is relatively minimal and pretty infrequent. I actually would not recommend upgrading her to level 10 before like you have the majority of other brawlers leveled up. Now for her basic stats, let's go ahead and take a look at this radar chart that takes into consideration her attack damage, her range, her speed, HP, super recharge rate, and reload speed, and compares it to all of the brawlers in the game. If you're wondering where I got this, I made it, cause I'm a nerd. A brawl nerd. <laughs> this information comes from my Brawl Olympic series, which if you like Brawl Stars, you should absolutely go ahead and check it out. As you will see, Nita is a brawler of extremes. Her attack damage is one of the lowest in the games, her range is also very low, and her super recharge rate is actually the slowest in the game. Her movement speed is... it's slow. There's no one slower than her. Granted, there are also like 16 other brawlers that are equally as slow as her. But where Nita lacks in these areas, she makes up for by having one of the fastest reload speeds in the game and a very decent HP. Now I would rate Nita's ease of use as above average or at a four out of five. By ease of use, I'm talking about how easy is it going to be for a new player to just pick her up and start playing with her and actually be pretty decent with her. But on the flip side, I would actually rate her skill cap at a four out of five, which means that it's actually fairly difficult for you to truly master Nita. Nita is one of the easiest brawlers to pick up and use due to her effective attacks with using her auto aim. Even if you're not auto aiming, it's pretty easy for you to manually aim her shots because of how wide her shots are. That being said, you absolutely should learn to manually aim with Nita because auto aim is not the most accurate and most effective way to use her attack. In fact, one of the biggest tricks to mastering Nita is understanding how you can actually use her attack to go through walls. No joke, her attack can actually hit brawlers around the other side of a corner by going through the wall if you know how to use it right. But of course, I'm going to be saving that for the advanced Nita tech later on in the video. Needless to say, using her attack to do this consistently and effectively does take a lot of time to master and is a very effective way for you to reach Nita's full potential. This is why Nita is really fun and easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Here's another fancy radar chart that I made because I can't help myself. Um, this one is regarding the game modes that Nita can play on. Okay, so we have every single game mode on here. And basically what I've done is I've ranked how good Nita is on each individual game map, game mode. Now as far as the road to 500 trophies goes for Nita, as with almost any brawler, Nita can easily be pushed up in showdown up until 200 or 300 trophies by using the survival strategy that I had talked about in my guide on how to push trophies as quickly as possible. But for Nita, she doesn't actually do too great solo showdown or uh, duo showdown long term. Eventually you want to start jumping into some other game modes. I would avoid doing bounty 
at, at all, at all costs, because she just has so low range and she also has so low damage or burst potential that it's she just really struggles in Bounty. Uh, for Heist, she can actually jump into Heist uh, with the correct team comp. It's a little bit more like a high skill reward uh, type of situation where you have other controlling type brawlers and you just work together as a team to push everybody back. The next game mode that she's pretty good at is going to be Brawl Ball, where her basically her main job is to just like keep enemy team players pushed back. She does struggle against those tanks because her DPS is so low, but against those brawlers that don't have as much HP, she can keep them pushed back. And against those tanks, that's the goal the entire time. You just keep them low on HP every, all the time by uh, attacking them from a distance where they can't actually reach her. For Brawl Ball, Nita does really well on maps where there aren't so many walls that tanks can get really up and close to her, but also not so few walls that she can't get any cover from those long range brawlers. For Nita, a medium amount of walls is good for Brawl Ball, so I hope that helps you. And with that being said, Nita's best game on 2 push all the way up to 500 and beyond is going to be Gem Grab. Now on Gem Grab, Nita is best played on either the left side of the map or the right side of the map, okay? It is not her goal to pick up the gems unless, like, her teammates are unable to for some reason or, like, there's a, you know, she, she has to. The, the situation calls for it. But that should not be her primary job, assuming her teammates are you know, handling their own jobs. Instead, it is actually her goal to go onto the sides of the map and push back the enemy team away from the gem mine so that your gem carrier can safely pick up the gems without having to worry about shots coming from all sorts of different directions. If Nita does happen to kill an enemy brawler on her side, she should either push further up and kind of try to get a little bit more control, or she should help the gem carrier by 2v1ing one of the brawlers that are uh, giving the gem carrier a little bit of an issue. Okay guys, now let's talk about some advanced Nita tech, and I did tease you with a little bit of a trick on making Nita's attack go through walls. Here's how it works. Now Nita's attack is fairly wide. If you actually aim her attack at a wall around the corner so that more than half of the width of her shot would not like normally hit the wall, then the entire shot will actually go through, and because it's a shockwave that goes through the ground, it actually will reach around the edge of the corner of the wall. And yes, that actually means that Nita can deal damage to brawlers around that corner of the wall that cannot fire back at Nita, which is one reason why using walls is so important for her. Now, mastering this little trick does take some time and it does take some practice, but it makes a huge difference in playing Nita to her full potential. So I definitely recommend that you play around with it and try to master it as soon as you can. Now, Nita does the same amount of damage whether you are up close or you're at max range. Because of this, it is recommended that you try to always keep your range from the enemy brawlers. The sooner you are familiar with your range versus the enemy brawlers range, the better. Ideally, you stay just far enough that you can easily hit them, but not so close that they can easily auto-aim on you or deal maximum damage. One of the best things that you can learn when playing with Nita is to use the walls to your advantage and poke from behind those walls. Poking is a skill where you hide behind a wall and you just kind of like move just outside of the range of that wall so you can actually fire off a shot and then go right back so the enemy brawlers cannot actually fire off against you. This is particularly effective for brawlers that just have like one single attack rather than like shooting multiple bullets, for example. Really skilled players playing Nita will poke out just enough so that half of their width of their attack is actually going there so that it will actually shoot below the wall and actually deal damage without an enemy brawler being able to fire back at Nita. Now referring to Nita's actual attack, her burst potential is really unimpressive. But what really helps here is that she has an above average HP which allows her to stay in the arena for longer and her reload speed is so incredibly fast that that actually allows her to frequently land shots off at enemy brawlers. And that's where Nita really thrives. She doesn't thrive in the burst situation. She thrives in the long battle where a lot of brawlers have to like fall back and heal up so that they can actually like recharge their ammo, regain their health and stuff. Where Nita, she can just stay in there because she has so much extra HP and she can keep on attacking. She doesn't need to fall back to reload. She only needs to fall back if she really needs to heal up. Another Nita tech tip is that when she has her super available, she actually has a lot of potential to push the enemy team back or even surround an enemy brawler and take them out. Early on in the match, your goal should be to try to keep your distance as much as possible and just focus on charging up her super. It will take a while, but once it is finally charged, you can use it to push back the enemy team, and then that's when you actually are able to have that advantage. Now, 
Now her super takes longest to charge out of all of the brawlers in the game, so make sure that you utilize it to the best way possible. Do not just drop the bear into a situation where it will get quickly taken, taken out. Like for example on an El Primo, you can easily take it out, or like a bull. Uh, or when there are like multiple brawlers all in one situation, they're all able to take it out really quickly. An exception to this may be if you absolutely need some type of a body block against a brawler who is shooting an attack that doesn't like penetrate past targets. So like a bull, for example. That's one of the best ways for Nita to actually 1v1 a bull, is to actually drop that bear in the exact right moment so that bulls will auto-aim those shots at the bear rather than hitting Nita. As I said, you can also use Nita's bear to surround an enemy brawler. You know, you come in from one side, then you throw it around another wall so like the enemy team brawler has to like fall back a different way than planned or they end up like just getting taken out because you and your uh, bear are actually 2v1ing them. Now because of Nita's lower attack range, Nita should be utilizing walls and grass as much as possible to get closer to an enemy player. And on top of that, because she plays a lot in the grass, there's a good chance that she's going to be playing against enemy brawlers that are also in the grass. Do not be afraid to use her attack to try and check the grass, see if there is an enemy brawler in the grass. Her reload speed is so fast that it most of the time it won't even really matter. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on Nita. Once again, if there's a brawler that you would like to see on another video similar to this one, I've got all the stats, I got all the numbers. All I got to do is just get the video ready for you guys. So drop it in the comment section below which brawlers you want to learn more about similar to this style of video. And you know what would be really sad is if you did suggest a brawler that I did cover video and you missed it. And there's only one thing that you can do to prevent that from happening, and that is to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in a very big way. For now, this is Carl Stein ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.